Welcome everyone and we are glad you are joining us for today's session, Media Composer Audio Efficiency Tips, Volume 1 with Marianne Post. We're so happy you could make it again today. Um, hopefully that music kind of got you going on this Thursday. Uh, we'll go ahead and do our quick housekeeping items for those of you following us on Zoom. The session is being recorded for playback later. Um, also, you can ask questions in the questions field. As you know, your audio is muted. For those of you watching us on the social feeds, hey, let us know where you're watching us from. We love to give you those shout outs and we're so glad to have you with us. Um, most of you know Mary Ann, uh, she's done some amazing presentations over the last year, and we're continuing that with the efficiency tips for today. So Mary Ann, as usual, you've got a lot to fit into 30 minutes, so I will go ahead and hand it over to you. All right. Thanks, Dawn. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. And yep, this is uh, one of two sessions on audio efficiency tips. And please ask questions if you need some clarification on anything I covered today. Also, it'll help me structure next week's session to co cover like whatever the most popular topics uh, come up. But my strategy for today and next week is gonna be workflow starting from input all the way through structuring your timeline, doing your sound design, getting into mixing effects, troubleshooting and that kind of thing, just to help you guys uh, become more efficient and also answer some really common questions that I get all the time. So make sure you guys have all the correct information. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Sure, things all set up here. And then I'm going to take care of a quick zoom and media composer difference just in case Don needs to reach out to me. And I'm going to hide my controls so nothing's floating for you guys. Okay, so I'm in Media Composer. And the first topic is working with input. A question I get all the time is, is it possible to bring in source clips and not have them all show up with their own track on the left side? And the answer to that is yes. So I'm going to pop into my source browser. Uh, I'm going to start with an, a sound effects bin. So I've got my project already pretty well structured so we can focus on audio. So I'm right clicking in the bin, going to input and source browser. If you're going to your source browser frequently, I highly recommend mapping this to your interface or keyboard. And then I'm going to just go to the beginning here so you guys can kind of see setup. I put everything on my desktop. Generally, everything's going to be on drives and that kind of thing. I'm just trying to keep it super simple to keep things moving forward. So I'm in my desktop and I've got a bunch of audio assets and here's everything I'm going to be working with for uh, this. So what I have are some sound effects, which makes sense. Now, as you guys probably already know, because you've probably input before, when you use your source browser, you have link or import. And I just click the link button. And when I click the settings icon, you'll see in link options that there's an audio section. Now, if you don't, if you ignore this and leave it at none, uh, and you're working with uh, audio that's either one channel mono or two channel stereo, it will bring in your audio as individual tracks. So you can change this. Now, when I'm linking, I'm usually linking to video. So um, not exclusively, but most of the time, I am bringing everything, every channel into their own tracks. So I leave this alone. So that's one of the reasons why there's link options and audio settings for both link and import so you can have two separate sets of settings. So I'm just gonna click okay to that because I'm actually gonna import. So when I click import and go to my settings icon, and there's an audio tab and it's the same option. So again, none's just gonna bring everything, every channel is gonna get its own track on the source side and you'll see that in a second. If I go to edit, this is where you can set up your multi-channel audio. So if you've been doing this after import and we're hoping to do it before import, here you go. Um, that answers that. So if I'm bringing in music, usually I'll bring that in a stereo and I just click this. If I'm bringing in sound effects, it depends on how the sound effects were structured. So I may bring one in and then take a look at it and then change that one later and then just change my settings. 
Um, you also have this as a menu where you can bring in sound, surround sound options. And that's all based on how each channel was structured will depend on which one you choose. So I've got a little information on that in a moment. But here's what I'm gonna do for this first import. I'm gonna leave this as mono. So I'm gonna click okay. And then I'm gonna notice it says none again, as though I made no change. It just means mono. And what I have here are, these are all sound effects that are either one or two channel. So they're gonna come in mono one track on the source side or two tracks. And then I have a surround sound clip, which actually is 5.1 surround. Um, we're not seeing that information um, here, but I am seeing it, um, I saw it at, at the desktop level. I've worked with this footage before. And if you guys recognize this film, Anesthesia, we use a lot in class and in these sessions. But I didn't change this to 5.1 because one thing that's kind of cool from an efficiency tip is if I am bringing in a number of mono uh, sound effects and then I have one that's like a surround, I don't have to do two passes. Um, and this is a more recent development. I don't know exactly when, but um, I am working on Media Composer 2021.6 and on Big Sur. So I'm on the Mac, which you guys probably saw, but I am on Big Sur. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this and see what happens. Now I am getting a question about how I wanna import this. Uh, it's not supported natively. So Media Composer is asking me if I wanna link and then transcode and yeah. So it's basically gonna do a two-step process. So I'm gonna click yes to that. All right, so now let me just get out of my source browser for a moment. So these are the sound effects I just selected that were at the top of that list. And notice I have two mono tracks uh, for it. So they may be stereo, but their track setup is set up as two tracks. And then when I bring this up, I didn't make any changes. I didn't set this to 5.1. Uh, Media Composer recognized it and went ahead and automatically made it a surround uh, track for me, okay? So that's pretty efficient. Um, if you want to bring in like your music and all that as stereo, if that's what you're predominantly bringing in, you might just go ahead and set your source settings. I'll go back to source browser here to under import. You might just set your audio to stereo. And I'm just gonna click the link icon and that enables stereo. Okay, and then I'm going to go back here to, to my music folder because I am somewhat organized. And checking that it's gonna go into anesthesia, we'll go ahead and um, import that. So it's going into my music bin. Okay, so when I double click this one, you'll see that that's a stereo track setup. Okay, now if you weren't paying attention, which I have, I just wanna create. <laughs> so I am definitely one of those people who if I don't stop myself, we'll just start bringing everything in and then some of it doesn't come in the way I need it to. Um, you can make changes later. It's just a little, a little bit of pre-planning, a little bit of pre-work, it makes the whole sound design process so much nicer. You can focus on creating that troubleshooting. Okay, so then I have one more piece to this that I'm gonna bring in. What if you receive uh, surround files, so you're gonna bring in surround sound, but each channel is its own file. So that's what I have going on here. This is 5.1, thus the six files. And so then uh, now I am going to change the setting. If I click this and bring these in, they're all just gonna be single mono channels and I don't, or clips that I'd have to assemble. But if I go to that import setting and I go to audio and edit, I can use this menu. And then it's, okay, well, which one? It has to do with track structure and you can see it here. So channel structure, um, each file is assigned either left, right, or that that's how it was set up. But Media Composer doesn't know that. So this is how it's gonna interpret the files. So um, you just need to go to whoever made it and find out was it SIMTI structure, was it Pro Tools and that kind of thing. All right. Um, and I have a, just a quick resource to show you guys if you wanna learn more about the surround uh, setup and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna choose that, click okay. Oops, click okay to this first. 
click OK. All right, and all I have to do is check one because Media Composer is going to recognize the rest. Um, and then it is asking me what I want my audio start times to be. And I'm just going, I'm in a 24P project, so I'm going with that. Um, and you may have to check it from the menu. And I'm going to click OK. And now for this one, which I just brought into my music bin because explaining and organizing are not good things to try to do simultaneously. But let me uh, just double click this and you'll see this one's also 5.1. And then if I wanna move it because I'm on one of the 2021 uh, releases of Media Composer, I can actually take this out of my music bin to my sound effects bin by just drag and drop either over to the left in the bin container sidebar or to the tab at the top. So there we go. So now I've got all my pieces ready to edit. So hopefully that helps you guys with that. The other thing is, okay, what if I need to change something? Maybe I brought it in incorrectly, or maybe I experimented and decided, okay, these are all gonna be stereo. I can go ahead and right click on any of these and go to modify and modify clip. I'm much better with hotkeys, as you can see, rather than digging through menus. So this one is set to uh, A1 and 2 mono. If I change this to stereo, click OK. There we go. So now I've got a stereo track. And notice it automatically moved in my timeline. So it's now set up to go to a stereo track. So mono uh, tracks only accept mono clips and stereo tracks only accept stereo and so forth with surround. So there you go. You can modify these if they're, they're not uh, correct. Um, so then the next piece of this is actually going to be, okay, starting to think about levels adjustments, uh, especially with things like music um, and that kind of thing. I only have one piece of music in here, so I'm going to actually borrow a bin. So if you have a number of assets, stock assets that you use, either from your music library or that kind of thing that you're using over and over again, I highly recommend making like a stock elements project and borrowing bins from that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and file open bin right now. And then right now it's taking me to my current project location. Uh, normally this is on a separate drive, but for simplicity's sake, I just threw everything on my desktop this morning. So I have this stock elements. This is actually an Avid project. So you can see all the Avid elements. But the cool thing then is here's my music bin. So if I wanna uh, play around with other music or need to, provide options because sometimes, especially if you're working with clients, you may have to uh, provide options. So that goes into that other bins uh, situation. Okay, so when it comes to adjusting levels as you're getting ready to edit, as we all know, music and uh, sound tends to come in pretty loud and we wanna put it under like voiceovers and that kind of thing. So we wanna make adjustments. So there's a couple of options for that. You do not have to put it in your timeline first especially if it's something that you're gonna be using over and over again, you just wanna establish a standard for it. Um, so a couple options. One, I can just uh, double click one of these clips. This one, the music right now is in my source monitor. And then if I go to tools and audio mixer, all right, we'll see that I actually get a source side audio mixer. And you can tell the difference. So especially if you've been working in a timeline, when I click on the record side, Here's the record side with all of its glorious magical tracks assembled. And then on the left side, the source monitor, that's how I know I'm in the source. So I can make the adjustment here before I put it in, especially if you're gonna be end up cutting it up in your timeline, um, or you're gonna be reusing it a lot. Uh, you can go ahead and just get that set. Um, I'm not doing a lot of playback because it does not play back well over Zoom or on social. Uh, so I'm by dragging down, I'm just lowering my levels, but of course, at any time, you're going to want to monitor your levels as well to see what works, but there's the mechanics of it. And then what if you have a bunch of these that you need to do? So these all came from the same piece of music, these three. So what if I just, I have a level in mind that I need, 
um, rather than loading each one in the source or editing them all very efficiently, I can just set up a level for these, especially what I call at the beginning of a project like sanity levels. My whole goal is not to blow out my ears. <laughs> um, I, I, I plan on hearing for quite a while still, so help myself out. So you can help yourself out by just right uh, clicking on your clips and there's an audio menu and you'll see there's a lot of options. Like if you need to change the sample rate, if you need to change pan, remove that kind of thing. Um, if you brought in stereo, by the way, and you need to split those back into mono, you can do that here without going to the modify menu. It's kind of fast. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go to apply gain. And it's how much do you want to apply it by? So actually, let me just cancel out of that so you'll actually be able to see this. So I'm going to go ahead and load a clip, go back to my audio mixer. Now, you do not have to do this. This is just so you can see the result, what it's actually doing if you do it in the bin. So you can totally skip this. I normally do. But hopefully this makes it a little bit more illustrative. And let's see, audio and apply gain. And I'm just going to do something big like minus 12. Okay, this may be really loud music. It's all going under voiceover, that kind of thing. So when I click OK, these are all set lowered by minus 12. So you can see that on this one audio mixer one. So you, and then if you need to tweak it, you can go back to that menu for each for the group uh, if you change your mind later. Um, but if I'm just tweaking individual ones that I'm using now, now I'm going to start working with them in my timeline because my goal is always to get to the timeline as fast as possible. All right. So there we go. We got some input options. We've got some setup. We've borrowed a bin from another project to grab stock elements. You don't have to import them every time. Save yourself some space. I know we have lots of space nowadays and it's less expensive, but all we do is fill it faster, just like storage units in our outside editing life. So uh, there we go. So then the next step is, of course, going to be starting to do the sound design. So getting everything into my timeline. Now, I've done most of the editing here just because of time. Um, as you can see, it took a minute just to talk about input and setup. So what I'm going to do is go to my sequences bin here on that. And I've got setup one. And it's just the start of some dialogue. I'll go ahead and play this back. I'm not sure how it's going to play back on Zoom, but it's just two characters. You're not running out on me, are you? No, uh, sorry, I was just... Uh, oh, uh, look who's keeping the tooth fairy busy. Oh, uh, you could say that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so uh, when you're cutting, you might just, you know, go ahead and just, I'm, I'm focusing on getting the story elements in. I'm not as focused on, oh, gee, which track is which character going to, especially when you're in a clip like this last one. I don't know if you guys could hear this, but let me play it one more time. You could say that. <laughs> We're both of them are talking on the same uh, clip. I don't want to worry about that until later. So this has actually been rough together, some trimming, that kind of thing. So I'll just usually just see it's A1 or A1 and A2. And then I'll do what's called checkerboarding. Just so that, because next week we're going to get into like EQ troubleshooting and some mixing troubleshooting and that kind of thing. Each voice on its own track is going to make that more efficient and a much easier to work with. So how to do that? Well, I have my lift over right ready to go. It's probably the segment tool I use the most. I'm right here in my timeline palette. And then it's just deciding which is going to go on where. So uh, the patient's audio, the lady, her, Mary, her voice starts first, was on the first clip. So I'm just going to, that's usually how I decide. Um, now, if you're in a production facility where they actually give you specs for setup, follow them. Um, so we can all work together, collaborate nicely. So now what I'm going to do is just click this clip. This is the dentist. And I'm gonna drag it down and I can hold down shift and command to make sure I constrain myself vertically and don't throw things out of sync. And notice when I'm clicking these that I'm just clicking the audio or the video. And that is because my link selection toggle is turned off. If I have this on, it's gonna select both. All right, so you wanna turn that off. So then um, I'm gonna bring this one down. So this is checkerboarding because it kind of got that pattern. And then what do I do at the spot where uh, this one, where the dentist and Mary talk? You could say that. 
Okay. Now I'm very rough here. I just found the spot where he's starting to laugh. I might get in there and be precise, but uh, time. So I found the spot will pretend it's perfect. And then I'm just going to add edit on A1. So you can add edit and bring these down accordingly. So I just hit the add edit button in my timeline palette or on your keyboard, wherever you have that mapped. And then now I can grab my red arrow again and drag this down. So there you go, you get your, your track set up. Now, as far as the rest of it, what elements are you gonna bring in and that kind of thing? Again, if you're at a facility that they actually have like production guide, post-production guidelines, um, uh, follow that. If you have a post-production supervisor, ask them. If it's your own projects, you can structure it obviously any way you want. And I'm always just going with the most efficient for me. So that's what this setup is. So this is an extended part of the scene. Um, I'm just gonna scrub through here and you'll see that it's kind of the beginning where actually this kind of creepy uh, x-ray cause we all wanna see x-rays flashing at us when we go to the dentist, turns off. And then she's actually gonna figure out what's going on. All right, and then it leads into this dialogue. So there's the checkerboard. Um, I just had it pulled out into a smaller sequence. All right, so voice, I always keep this thing stuck together. So voice is gonna be on my A1, A2. And then if they have two tracks, it'd be like A1, A2, A3, A4. We've all seen screen captures likely of media composer timelines where it just looks like a gazillion tracks. A lot of them are audio tracks because every voice gets its own track. So it might be A1 through four or A1 through six has the voice, each voice. So this one's super simple because of the sequence we use in our 100 level classes. Then I like to put anything down that's going to be sync. So there's this electrical sound that comes in pretty precisely at this spot. And then we go into some Foley stuff where she gets up and walks. And I'm actually just going to solo this to see, hopefully maybe you guys will be able to hear this. Um, Okay, so like the footsteps are there. So all of that that's going to be syncing, I put on their own on um, a separate like sound effects track. And if you start getting confused, which um, yeah, especially if you're not working on this project constantly, you can always right click on any of your track selectors. I just right click on A1, and I can rename my track. So if the top track is um, nat sound or something I could put like nat for natural. Of course, then we get into the voice stuff later. Um, so it could be voice. So maybe this is Mary's track. Okay, so you can rename those. So you can have sound effects, music. So then below this, um, I have actually two, two tra tracks going on here. Um, I have a surround sound track for another week and then i also have this in in stereo i do not need both of these this is just more to, to show track track structure um in fact i could go ahead and just actually delete the stereo on so i'm just going to click ok to a5 and a6 so that's really what i need next week we'll be doing some comparisons so we'll bring that back okay so we, we do our design and it's just you know normal loaded over right into your timeline couple more efficiency tips, especially in a situation where you don't have like, the, I always picture the classic, someone has shoes on their hands and they're walking around or whatever uh, to create the footsteps. If you are working with a footsteps uh, sound effects, you may find yourself copying those a lot. So I have like an instance that here where she's actually still walking, but there's no sound. Okay, so if you're in a situation where you need to copy your sound effects or maybe you have ambient noise and it's too short for the scene, you can go ahead and copy those clips, all part of the sound design. And it's a really good idea to have some sort of ambiance, whether it's just room tone or just to set the stage, you know, where are they? Are they in the city? Is the window open? Do we need some city effects? Or are they in some um, countryside doctor's office? Uh, that kind of thing. So get that ambiance in there to kind of tell the audience, of course, where you're at or where your characters are at. So I'm going to, I'm just zooming in. I'm actually hitting command right bracket right now to zoom in. So it'd be control right bracket on Windows. 
So I want to make a copy of this footstep to put over here. And when I click right now, I'm only getting one. That's because my link toggles off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on in my timeline palette. There we go. So I start to click and drag, which is a move. And then you add on your Alt key on Windows, Option key on the Mac, and then it's making a copy. Okay. And then if the timing's not right, okay, especially if I turn on my waveforms here, uh, that's what this marker is actually telling me is actually this footstep is early. Okay, and then she stops now on social, it might be a little out of sync and it might be like, well, it's right or way off. But where the marker is, is actually where it should be. I can once again, grab my um, red arrow, my lift over right, click this, and then from to tweak it, I can actually use my trim keys. So if I use my period key, that's gonna take these forwards one frame at a time, comma's gonna take them backwards. Um, you can use your M and forward slash keys. And this is if you left your uh, trim keys at default. But most of the time, I'm just scooting these around just to get it perfect so it hits. So there's no reason to say, oh, well, that's the best we can do. Use those trim keys so you can tweak these by one frame at a time with your comma and period. You just have to have your clip selected. So if I was sloppy with my option drag, I could do the same thing here. So my goal always is get the elements under the action get that all set up and then go back and focus totally on fine tuning that, okay? So there we go. So that kind of gets us through uh, sound design um, and that and time flies as always. So next week, it's gonna be all about mixing and EQ and saving effects and that kind of thing and questions that might come up uh, today. So I uh, should be able to hear over Zoom. Uh, do we have any questions? Hey, Marianne. Uh, so we did have a couple come in, so we'll go ahead and get those over to you. The gray area there on your timeline for the audio, are you able to rename those segments or are they named when the file is imported in? For example, yeah. where it says electrical, can you change that to like x-ray? Yeah, actually, um, you absolutely can. Let me go into this, I'm not sure. So you see all my names here, aren't that great? Um, and there's actually two electricals. What you're gonna wanna do, and these actually are pointing to different source clips. I combine projects to create these sessions and create effective examples. So the original clip was this actually, and you can see it's like different. Um, so you, when you import, then you'll wanna rename um, here. So then I could say, okay, um, x-ray. So you wanna do that before you edit. Now, if you're coming from a clip that uh, there's different sections you're gonna use. Um, so for example, like the footsteps actually has a couple different types depending on you know, if you're tiptoeing or maybe doing more heel toe, that kind of thing. And this is just random right now. What you can also do is, okay, that's one of the footsteps. That's a very slow walker, um, but uh, that's one of my footsteps. And then I can drag and drop this and be like, okay, this is tiptoe uh, footstep or something. And then this one would be like, let's say heel toe. So you can make sub clips ahead of time. And then when you cut these guys in, heel toe. Um, so now that you have these smaller parts of this, and I'm just going to throw this in here and probably mess up my sequence, but you can see the naming. So yeah, I'm shorter than I thought. So you can see now that's heel toe. So name them before you put them into your timeline and then um, make sub clips. If you need different parts of a sound effect or music, uh, make sub clips of that so you can rename it. All right. Awesome. That seemed to answer the questions. We had more thumbs up, which is great. Uh, let's see if there's other questions that come in. There was one question about EQ, but you're going to be covering that next week. So we'll yeah. hold that one. So we're not diving into EQ too much on this. <laughs> Again, if there's any questions, go ahead and enter them uh, either in the Zoom session or uh, the social media feeds that we're following. And we are looking to have that second session with Marianne next week. Uh, so we'll give everyone just a moment. 
but yeah, you're gonna a lot of a lot of hearts in today's session oh, good. and oh, um, good. a lot of good praise for saving people time. So that's always a good thing. Time is always our our enemy, right? To yeah. try to get everything done. <laughs> it's my biggest challenge. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I'm glad it's helpful. It's more tech and less creative, but hey, it gets us to the creative faster. It does. It does. Okay. So let me go ahead and quickly share my screen. Uh, so we get next week's sessions up as well as our contact information. So let me get that up now. There we go. I believe I'm sharing it. Um, as most of you know, the sessions can be find, found back at avid.com. Uh, we would really love your feedback. Um, we've been doing almost 100 sessions of these now. Um, so we're really looking for feedback on what you would like to see or we, you would like to have Marianne present or other people present, uh, whether it's Media Composer or Pro Tool. So please, please, please send us that feedback at liveonlinelearning at avid.com. We really appreciate it because we definitely want to get these uh, customized for what you guys are looking for. So uh, with that, uh, Marianne, thank you so much for your session and thank you all for attending and we'll see everybody next week. All right. Take care, everybody. See ya.